So as Neil talked about last week, linear regression is not optimal for the classification setting. The only good thing about it was that your mother still loved you. <laughs> and <laughs> in the frequentist setting, logistic regression is also a likelihood maximization problem. Uh, with the, and in the case where the number of parameters is only two, this is the log likelihood function. And like we did in the regression setting, we use the likelihood function at a prior for our parameters. And the standard weekly informative prior, and I'll talk about this later, is in uh, Andrew Gelman's ARM package is the student t distribution with one degree of freedom, which is also the Cauchy distribution. So I am using the cancer data set that Neil used last week. Uh, uh, this was from the University of Wisconsin, if I remember correctly. So I'm using the Bayes GLM function, fitting it with all the predictors that I have. Um, and this function is built from the GLM function, so a lot of the calls that you make are, or the parameters that you enter are basically the same. So using this function, we can get point estimates, which end up being posterior modes for our parameters and their standard errors. And they will be the same as the output given in GLM because we have no prior information in this case. So this is the curve for the data. Um, I'm going to be talking about separation in a bit. And in this case, just notice the smoothness of this curve. Uh, there is no, or both 1 and 0 are observed at almost all values of thickness. And that means the data is not well separated. But if that make, doesn't make sense, I'll, I'll get to it in a bit. Or right now. <laughs> so separation occurs when a particular linear combination of predictors is always associated with a particular response. I'll show you a graph of this in a bit. Um, this, when this problem occurs, it can lead to maximum likelihood estimates of infinity for some parameters. And that's a huge problem. And the Bayesian approach can fix that. Or at least the Bayesian GLM function can fix that issue with the GLM function. So a common fix uh, was to drop predictors from the model. And according to Zorn in 2005, this usually led to the best predictors being dropped. And that's obviously, again, not an optimal situation. So in 2008, Gelman, uh, Jacqueline, Patau, and Sue proposed a Bayesian fix. They use the weekly informative prior, which is the two distribution with one degree of freedom. Um, and they created the Bayes GLM function in the ARM package. And using Bayes GLM, like I said, instead of GLM can solve this problem. So an example of separation is something like this. I generated this data. X is for generated from a normal distribution. Uh, y is 0 if x is less than 2, 1 is 1 if x is greater than 1. So this is, just, this is not like a realistic scenario, or maybe, I don't know. But I had to generate this data because I couldn't find data sets with proper separation. But as you can tell, that slope is basically a vertical line. That's not a good thing. There's, the algorithm actually doesn't converge when in the GLM function. But when I use Bayes GLM, it solved the problem. We have proper estimates for our parameter. It's more or less smooth looking. Um, yeah, so here are the point estimates that I got. This is the GLM fit. 1, negative 164 and 75. Standard errors of 69,000 and 32,000. And the p-values, and they're just useless. But So while this is giving us estimates, it's because it doesn't appropriately fit the model. The algorithm doesn't converge to the right values. Whereas using Bayes GLM with the weekly informative prior uh, gives us proper estimates and useful standard errors. So the Bayesian approach can also fail in this setting if you're, not, if you're just using completely uninformative priors. In this case, they specifically proposed a weekly informative prior with a t distribution. And a lot, primarily because in most situations, your estimates for your parameters in logistic regression is going to be between like negative 5 and 5. Because like, I think having a beta of 5 will increase your probability from 0 to 50% 50, 50 with a one unit increase in the, one of your predictors, which is kind of unrealistic in most cases. So this is separation. And this is probably the sh uh, glory of Bayesian logistic regression right here. So any questions so far? Are you guys in a deeper slumber now? <laughs> Now I understand why, when you, huh? Yeah. So wouldn't you expect still a, a steeper line, from even though you're using the Bayesian approach? Probably. I mean, okay. I honestly don't know. Like, this is, again, a 
data set which I generated. In, in more realistic settings, the separation was probably more complicated, and you probably would accept, expect some semblance of a solution. So if you read his paper, which was one, a part of the reading list, he actually has an applied example, but he didn't make the code or the data set readily available. It probably is available somewhere, but if you read, I, I would refer you to that for more information on this. Is that an adequate answer? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Joanne, you had a question? No, I have no prior information about this. But that is a good question. You can actually, so a bad rap Bayesian statistics get is, gets is that it is subjective. But in this situation, you can try many different priors and show the person who's reading your analysis what, your, what the posterior, what your point estimates be, end up being in different situations. And then they can decide for themselves. Like in the frequentist setting, there are lots of assumptions within the model itself. In the Bayesian setting, most of my, many more of my assumptions are readily available to the person who's reading my paper because I'm making an assumption about the likelihood function and I'm making an assumption about the prior distribution. And those two are readily, you can challenge those readily as a reader because they're right in front of you. Does that answer your question? Okay. <laughs>